Okay, so now we're going to look at um, some international comparisons uh, in terms of violence. Um, and we'd said that we wanted to compare and contrast uh, levels and types of violence in different countries. Um, and for the purposes um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to try and understand Australia in the global context by comparing it to, um, to South Africa, Brazil, and the United States. Um, and to try and understand the, the similarities and differences between those countries and what we can learn from that. Um, now, if you pay attention to your lecture slides, um, the first two slides have, have got some important information there, which you should be reading um, uh, as I explain this. So we look at um, the global homicide rates and we've got some numbers there, okay? Um, and it's the country, the total number of homicides, um, the population and the homicide rate, and then where it ranks um, in terms of the most violent to least violent in the world. Okay, so Brazil, homicide rate um, of 61,000 homicides per year. Okay, um, that's, that's uh, um, in this estimation, and bear in mind these change every single year, so this is already out of date. 61,000 people being killed in one country. Um, and that surely sounds like a lot of murders. Um, next down, India, 42,000 people killed per year. Uh, next down, Mexico, 24,000 people uh, being uh, murdered per year. Um, and uh, the next on our list is South Africa with 19,000 um, uh, homicides uh, per annum, okay? Then um, very close to South Africa, we have the United States at 17,000. And then like unimaginably low down off the bottom of the charts, we have Australia at 227. Now, we look at these numbers. Brazil 61,000 compared to India 42,000. Um, Mexico 24,000 compared to South Africa 19,000. Um, how do we make sense of these? Um, looking at those simply, um, we, would, we would get the impression that Brazil is, is, is one of the most dangerous countries in the world and India follows close behind. But that's not true, okay? And this is a critical point. This is something you really need to understand. And it applies to things like measuring violence and it, and it applies to things like measuring um, other, other social um, uh, things like, um, like, like infection rates. So for instance, COVID-19 infection rates. Um, the US, uh, as I'm speaking, is, is registering over 10,000 infections per day, um, whereas Victoria is, has currently jumped up from only around 10 per day to about 400 per day. Um, but what is 400 in relation to 10,000? Now, here's the problem with these numbers. These are total numbers. To these are total numbers of homicides. So yes, more people are getting killed in Brazil than get, are getting killed in India. But the fundamental statistical problem is the population of India is massively bigger than the population of Brazil. Um, uh, India has more than six times the population of Brazil. Therefore, to say that Brazil has, has a homicide rate of 61,000 out of 200 million people is in fact very, very much higher than the Indian homicide rate of 42,000 out of 1.3, oh, sorry, of, of 1.3 billion people, okay? And that's the critical difference. You, ha you can't just give the number of homicides. You have to express the number of homicides as a percentage or as a proportion of the population of that country. And so the way in which we do that is we give it as a rate per 100,000, okay? And this is typically what is done. COVID infections are often given a, a, a rate per million. How many people per million population are, were infected today? Homicide rates, how many people per 100,000 people in the population were killed this year? So it's one hand, per 100,000 per annum, okay? So Brazil 61, a thousand murders is, is a 30 per 100,000 population. India's 42,000 is only 3.2 per 
um, uh, murders per hundred thousand people. Three, so three point two is it, 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 it's 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 very very much lower than Brazil's. Okay, it's a it's a little bit more than a tenth Brazil's murder rate. Uh, similarly, Mexico's twenty four thousand factored into a population of one hundred thirty million is a rate of twenty per hundred thousand, and South Africa's nineteen thousand out of fifty million population is a rate of 34. So when we look at that, we see that Brazil and South Africa are very high in the ranking. South Africa is 10th in the world, Brazil is 12th in the world. Um, India is, is actually very low in those rankings um, because that 42,000 was out of more than a billion people. Okay, then let's look at the USA. 17,000 homicide is out of a population of 330 million. That gives a rank of 87 which puts it about halfway down the world rankings with 5.4 per 100,000. And 5.4 is not far from the global average. So the global average for homicides is around that number. So sometimes around six, six per 100,000. That's the, that's the international norm for murder rates. Okay, then look at Australia's measly little 227 people being killed. Now, firstly, that's 227 people out of 25 million. 25 million compared to these big populations. Um, 330 million in the US, 200 million in Brazil, 1.3 billion in India. So the, it's, it's really a tiny population. But even with respect to that tiny population, it's a very, very small proportion. It's not, it's not even one person per 100,000 people. So Australia is ranking right down at 181st out of, out of a list of about 200 countries in the world. So it's really quite low um, uh, down in the listings. It's actually a, a country with a very, very low murder rate um, by international standards. And, um, and, and we can compare that. So that the 0 0.9 compared to that, say, maybe 6 um, per 100,000 global rate, which which points to in the world about half a million people are murdered every year. That's a, that's, I mean, that's a lot of people, like half a million people getting murdered every year. But that's half a million out of a population of 7 billion. Um, Australia, the tiny little 227 out of a very small population still makes it a, a, a country with an extremely low homicide rate. Okay, so going to the next slide of rankings and homicides per 100,000. And there, you see, there, there I'm showing you just the, the, hundred, the, the rankings in the world from most violent to least violent and the, and the per 100,000. Once again, these are already out of date. These numbers change so much every year that any statistic I give you is, a, is already a historical statistic. So on this listing, um, the, it's, the rankings are actually a little bit different. Colombia is 60, making it the 60 per 100,000, making it the most violent. South Africa is 49, making it the second. And then in that top group of about nine violent countries, we see Jamaica, Venezuela, Mexico, um, and then a big drop. I've left out the ones in between. A big drop to to number 24 in the global rankings. The US with a um, number of four per 100,000. You see already it's not the same number as the previous slide because of annual differences. India, um, number 26 with three. So India and United States are relatively high, but they're much lower than those, than those sort of, you know, the league leaders, um, those very high countries that have got um, more than 10 and, and some of them up to around 50 um, homicides per 100,000. And then there's another jump down from 26 to the 40s and 50s. And every country there has got roughly one per 100,000. And those are averages. So the, those will be 0 0.8, 1.2, but the average amount is one. And they all, and look at, look at the countries, France, Australia, Canada, UK, Italy, Spain, Germany, Netherlands, New Zealand, Denmark, Norway. Um, and those cluster together, um, and then um, right down at the bottom of the list, even below those, we see two sort of outlier countries, Japan and Saudi Arabia with 0 0.4 and 0 0.3. Those countries have extremely low homicide rates. So what you can see here, um, 
you can see Australia kind of sitting in that low group with a whole lot of, of other similar countries, other sort of Western countries with, with fairly developed economies. Um, and so, 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 so Canada, Australia, UK, France, several European countries, all we can see a kind of a socioeconomic similarity um, in, in, in those countries. Um, in the same way that when we look at the very high homicide rates, we can, we can see that those are all re really all developing countries, uh, countries with um, emerging economies, uh, countries that have been through political instability. The Colombia ranking there is because of a serious in political instability that is now stabilized and Colombia has dropped right down um, to, to only about half of, of when that statistic was measured. Um, and then the and then sort of these in between countries, the US and India, um, which we'll want to ask questions about. So so what do we see in those patterns? Um, uh, one of the things um, going on there um, is that we see that developing countries and countries in in major political transition tend to have very high murder rates. Um, what we see is the sort of traditional Western stable democracies. Uh, with strong economies tend to have quite low um, homicide rates. Um, and a clear pattern emerges there, which we're going to need to talk about, which is that the more social and economic inequality there is in a country, the um, higher the homicide rate tends to be. Uh, looking at that, it's also clear that Australia is right at the low end of the spectrum, and yet it's typical of it's a country like this. It's, it's a highly developed economy, relatively low so, uh, social inequality by global standards. Um, and so it fits in with that sort of social democracy pattern, um, those European countries, Canada. Um, but the interesting, the interesting anomaly here is the United States, the richest country in the world, the richest country in human history, uh, enormous concentration of global wealth in the United States, and yet, by Western standards, this is an extremely violent uh, country, a country really characterized by things that we don't see, the kind of school shootings, um, massive police brutality against citizens, um, um, and, and the, the kind of these patterns of mass shootings in the United States, although those are actually not a major contributor to the overall homicide rate. Um, but we need to think about that. Why is the U.S. A, a rich country, but also a violent country, when the, when the normal pattern is that, um, that developing countries are more violent, economically developed countries are less violent? Um, and so we can, and then we look at our other two examples, Brazil, as shown in the film City of God, uh, and South Africa, as discussed in that article, Violence is Not a Crime interesting comparisons between those countries. Um, some historical similarities, um, but, but one of the main things we notice in both of those countries is they, they're countries that do have concentrations of economic development and wealth, but they're also countries with massive concentrations of poverty and inequality. So one of the, the things that kind of jumps out uh, in these high vi violence examples of Brazil and South Africa is this fact uh, of, um, in, of, of economic inequality. Um, and, not, and, and note that, that it's not simply poverty. There is poverty in those countries, but there's worse poverty in, many, in several other countries. It's, it's, it's the fact of economic inequality, not simple poverty. Um, and interestingly, when we reflect on the US, this is a feature of the US as well. An, an incredibly wealthy country on one level, but also a country characterized by, relative, by, by quite significant economic inequality in comparison to other Western social democracies. Okay, now let's just raise a couple of problems here. This is all very nice. That we're, we're looking at homicide rates, okay? And we, we, we are judging the level of violence by the annual homicide rate. Um, and that's a good thing to do, and it's a bad thing to do, okay? Now, statisticians love the homicide rate um, uh, because it's easy to know the homicide rate, literally because it's easy to tell whether someone's alive or dead. It's not 
Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes someone's missing. You don't know whether they're alive or dead. Sometimes you have a homicide disguised as a suicide or an accident. Um, so it is possible that the homicide rate is subject to those factors. We don't know. This is a disguised homicide. This was a, a missing uh, case that hasn't been finalized yet. But mostly, it's really easy. Like dying is the biggest thing that happens in anyone's life. A whole lot of things happen when someone someone dies. They're like the, the, the state becomes aware, the official statistics become available. Um, it's, it's a thing that is noted by governments and recorded, and it's, so it's easy to get really rigorous, uh, reliable information about homicide rates. Um, in most countries, they, they, they of course, maybe countries that bureaucratic infrastructure is so deteriorated that they don't, not even collecting those or um, in, a, in a sort of national coherent way, or that they may be um, concealing that information. Okay, but we like homicide because it's, it's highly visible and it's easy to, to, to kind of double check. There's not a lot of ambiguity. There's not a lot of difference in definitions. The, like no matter which country you are in the world, the, um, the, the definitions of homicide tend to be fairly, not exactly, but fairly closely connected. Okay, but there's a number of problems that we need to, th to, to talk about. Uh, firstly, as we've mentioned, not all countries collect the data as effectively as others. Um, more developed countries, more kind of open democracies tend to be better with that. Some other countries may um, just be uh, incompetent at collecting the data or may have political reasons for concealing or distorting it. So there's that problem, but, but um, there's a much bigger problem. There's a much, much bigger problem than that, is, is we, are, we, are, we are acting as if the homicide rate is a measure of the violence of the country. And, and why are we doing that? Homicide is one very, very specific and quite honestly, a fairly small form of violence. Many other acts of violence happen many, many more times other, um, than homicide. The number of people who are, who are assaulted, um, the number of, of, of people in many countries who experience violent crimes, um, you know, like, um, like getting mugged with a weapon, um, th th those, th those, those greatly exceed um, murder as a form of violence. And, and they don't cor necessarily correlate. The country where a lot of people are murdered is, doesn't, isn't necessarily a country where, for instance, a lot of people um, are assaulted at home. Um, so, so can we take homicide as a strong indicator of all forms of violence? And we need to be a bit careful about jumping to that conclusion, okay? Um, so firstly, there's a lot of different kinds of violence that are measured differently. Um, and another problem is that around these forms of violence, the kind of laws and definitions can be very different in, in different countries. And a, and a classic example that um, we, can, we can look at is comparing murder and rape as violent crimes. I mean, these are the two most sort of striking uh, violent crimes that we can think of. And yet, from a statistical point of view, they represent totally different problems. Um, and getting official statistics, and this is normally the sort of official police reporting statistics, the police are going to have really good, a really good idea of how many murders happen in, in a country, usually. The statistics for sexual assault are much, much, much trickier um, for one problem. Uh, and, and there's several problems. The biggest problem is that people tend not to report sexual assaults. Um, a homicide, the, the, the dead body is visible to everyone. It gets reported. It gets known about Sexual assaults can easily be invisible. Um, no, no, you, you can't tell by looking at someone that they've been sexually assaulted. Um, sexual assaults tend to happen in private, um, and there are many, many reasons why people may not report them. Um, and if they are reported, the police may not, um, may not, may not prosecute them. Um, so rape stats are, are, are very tricky. They're very unreliable stats. The, the official statistics and what's really going on 
are very poorly correlated, whereas murder stats are, are pretty good. And it's a, it's a good contrast between a kind of stat that's easy to get and easy to rely on in a, in a, in a, in a, in a way that we have kind of confidence in that it's pretty much correct. Whereas, whereas rape stats, we pretty much know are wrong. We, and then we have to work out how badly wrong they are and why. Um, and so it's very hard to do an international comparison on something like sexual assault as it is with um, a sort of intimate family kind of violence. Um, not only because those things are often underreported, because the, the definitions might be different. Um, what is called rape in one country in terms but uh, you know in terms of the legal definition might might be quite different from another country. What gets classified as indecent assault or sexual assault, um, you know, these, 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 there may not be consensus. And so the statistics generated by different criminal justice systems may be quite different. But worst of all, the underreporting means that what's really going on and what is known by the authorities are totally different. Because of this, there's another thing we can do. And the other thing that we can do is, um, is victim surveys. Rather than looking at at, at, at the police recording of the incident. We, we go out as social researchers and we, and we ask people. We just go kind of door to door surveys and we say, uh, tell us what kinds of things have happened to you in the last year. And, 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 and then people report the, 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 the forms of victimization. And we, we, there, there we discover many things that have not been reported to the police. You know, like, uh, oh, you know, I got, I got bullied, um, there was a domestic violence incident, but I didn't call the cops, um, those kinds of things. Of course, there's a problem that people may not wish to disclose stuff, so there may be a lot happening that we're not being told about, but the important thing uh, here is that we're, getting, that, that, that we're getting at a source of information that is not accessible to the cops. The police only know when people come and lay charges. Victim surveys manage to get at a whole lot of other information. They can often get at it more sensitively. They can access kind of wider sort of um, range of ways in which people are victims of violence, um, but they can also be flawed. They also rely on, on trust, on the person wanting to disclose the experience of victimization, and there can be many good reasons why, why that doesn't happen. But this gives you a sense of like, um, uh, within the global picture, firstly, there are huge discrepancies between the more and less violent societies. Secondly, there are clear international patterns um, between sort of more developed, more economically developed, more socially equal countries having low violence and economically developing societies with high levels of econo um, economic inequality having higher levels of violence. Um, we tend to make these sort of these uh, lists um, of of ranking based on homicide, but homicide is a is a is is just one quite small type of violence, um, and and the other measures of violence are really more difficult because of definitions, because of underreporting, um, but we do try and support them with things like victim studies. Um, and what, what we see within this overview is that, interestingly, Australia, by global standards, is a very low violent society. And one of the things we need to understand is, is not only how to solve the problem of the remaining violence in Australia, but to look at what Australia has done right, like what has been done well. Um, that has been effective in, in making this a low violent society, not only what still needs to be done. Sometimes we need to look back on, on the positive lessons, and, 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 but at the same time, we need to address the fact that there still are absolutely critical problems, which we will talk about in the next video.